Welcome to the 2020-21 Tabor College Year in Sports Celebration. Tonight, we will recognize and celebrate the athletic and academic achievements of our student athletes and coaches, hear from our newest members of our Tabor Athletic Hall of Fame, and be encouraged by the testimony of one of our student athletes. My name is Marty Ziesmer, and I'm the Director of Athletics at Tabor, and will be the MC for tonight's events. We have added a few awards this year to our event in hopes that we can honor a few more people for their dedication and service to Tabor. The mission of Tabor College Athletic Department is to provide student athletes with an environment that supports learning, promotes excellence, and stimulates growth. Our vision is to see God expand our sphere of influence, our desire to see our coaches and athletes be intentional and diligent along these lines. Before we get started, I'd like to say a thank you to our student athletes and coaches. This has definitely been an abnormal year. I remember back in the summer, we had concerns if our teams would even be playing. As coaches, you had an extraordinary job of keeping your teams encouraged through your Zoom meetings and trying to answer questions you didn't really have answers to. When it finally determined that we would be playing in altered formats, it was cause for relief and joy. However, through the fall, we dealt with changes in schedules, in some cases, day of. We dealt with cancellations, isolations, quarantines, and so much more, but we made it through. As student athletes, you persevered through the challenges and were flexible in making things work. As coaches, you stepped up and led. I thank you for your attitudes and patience through this time. I look forward to have a more normal year starting in August. I thank you once again for watching all this being played out and being proud to lead such a great group of coaches and student athletes. I thank God for the great opportunity that each of us had to learn and grow through this year. Thank you. A few items to note as we begin our event. Um, as you well know, spring sports, or most of them, have not finished their seasons. And in some cases, um, they have not honored their all-conference athletes. So some of these awards uh, will not uh, be available. Additionally, in the past, we have honored the NEI Scholar Athletes, but the NEI has changed the timeline to announce the honorees later in the summer. Each of these honorees or receiving a plaque in the future. We are honored this evening to have one of your fellow student athletes, Robert Eisenhower, share his testimony as a student athlete. Robert is a member of the baseball team and is our leadoff hitter and currently leads the NEI in stolen bases. Please welcome Robert as he shares with us. Hey guys, so I guess uh, you know who I am now. Uh, a couple of you guys know me on campus. Um, so I was under the impression that like somebody from each team was going to come up and speak like this. I didn't know I was going to be the only one. So uh, um, little frazzled as I got here, but uh, I wanted to not prepare something because I didn't want to do a disservice to you in my testimony. I wanted to allow the Holy Spirit work through me today. So I just showed up with my heart and uh, I'll just let you know who I am. So I'm from Georgetown, Texas. Uh, uh, I don't know if anywhere anybody is from Texas around here. Give me some some whoops. Anybody heard about Georgetown? It's around Austin, Texas. You got to heard of that. Um, started out. I got a walk-on offer at Angelo State. It's, it's a D2 college down there, and um, was there for three semesters. Didn't really work out. Chose to do some things that didn't really help my academics or my athletics, and it uh, showed. Got to go to Minnesota um, for that uh, fourth semester and play uh, the JUCO World Series there. It's pretty cool. I got to meet one of my teammates that I ended up playing against, Kay Weems, back there in the back. And uh, ended up being a good road here now. Um, when I got here, I always, I always knew that God had a plan for me. And uh, Tabor provided some resources that I could kind of really, really grab and hold on to that. The Lord works around here. Uh, his presence is, is made known by the people that are here and the people that make this campus what it is. Just getting to see everybody around here, I get to see the way that the Holy Spirit and Jesus has really made a testament to each person on this campus. No matter if you think that it's happened or not, um, there's some people around here that we see it. I'm so thankful that uh, I was able to come to Tabor. I don't know what I would be doing um, if I didn't get the opportunity to come to a school where the, the, the Lord works in such ways. Um, so I'm thankful for everybody here that... that uh, has a role in making Tabor what it is. And I know some people, they come here and they don't really pay attention to that. 
So you're, you might question what I'm saying right now. Um, you know, well, I don't see God working around here. I don't see, I don't see the Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't see him. I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I ask that you just press in. Um, I had some people around me that really asked me to press in. Uh, Cody DeRozier, if anybody knows him or remembers him, um, he was here last year and a little bit this year. Um, he asked me to press in and because he saw a lot of what Tabor offered um, in the, the, the atmosphere of showing who you are in Christ and helping you find your identity in Christ. And so I did. I chose to because uh, I saw what it did in him. And when I did, uh, I was awakened with uh, a life that I always knew that I could lead, but I never chose to. And uh, I've had the opportunity to be um, on the baseball team where the Lord is working. And I see all of you, you guys out there right now, um, and uh, not just the baseball team, but everybody else that I know here on campus. And the way that the Lord has worked in my life through this campus, it's allowed me to talk to people and speak into their lives, and not only speak into anybody else's lives, but learn from people on this campus that have learned from Tabor. Tabor's got a special place in my heart, not just uh, for that, the opportunity to play baseball or get a degree or meet friends or meet my future wife. Um, Tabor's got a special place in my heart for the way that it allows God to influence their own. Uh, for anybody on campus that uh, is here and they're, they're thinking, you know, I don't really see what this guy's talking about. The Lord's working on campus. They just, they see a town in the middle of nowhere. It's dry. There's nothing to do. They got a bunch of obligations. They got to show up at chapel. They got to do this. They got to take these Bible classes. They got to do that. Um, I just, uh, I want to stand up here and uh, testify that I just ask you to press in, press into the things that are on campus or outside of campus or the people that are on campus, um, that maybe they show up with a little bit extra smile. Um, they show up at chapel and they're a little more excited to be there. Um, or they're showing up at SPND. You know, they're leading Bible study. They're talking about Bible study. They're talking about Jesus. I ask I please, I plead with you, just press in to any of those resources that Tabor offers. Or, or if it's just people you know, like me, or if there's anybody else out there you know that is either alive in the Holy Spirit or is looking for it, I ask that you press in, because that's what Tabor offered me, was the opportunity to do that and uh, find my identity in Christ. And um, now I get, to, I get to show out for the baseball team, I get to show out for the glory of God, because... When I got here, my life was turned around. Um, I wasn't allowed to live for myself anymore. And seeing the people at Tabor, especially some of the coaching staff that I'm blessed with, um, that they don't really live for themselves anymore. They live for the glory um, and the honor that God provides, and they allow the Holy Spirit to work through them. Uh, I'm a new man. Um, I'm not just a man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Holy Spirit man. Uh, I'm filled with something that's, uh, that I was never able to get on my own. Um, So uh, you people out there that have uh, been, in my, been working in my life and uh, have been working in this college, um, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to come here and be something that I never could be. Um, and all you people out there that come here to Tabor, come here to the school, that you think it's just something I got to do, something you got to do, you're going to be gone, uh, I pray for you. And I thank you, though, too, that I get the opportunity to know you and work in you guys' lives. So uh, I'll leave you with this. Um, I hope that my little time spent here shows people around me that uh, they have the opportunity to, to be something new and to have something new. And Tabor provides the opportunity to do that. So uh, that's my testimony, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Bob, for your leadership on the baseball team and around campus. I appreciate your willingness to speak to us. How God used your time at Tabor as a student athlete, a student as an as an athlete. So, um, we're going to start uh, our season summaries and team recognitions right now. We're going to start with uh, men's cross country. Men's cross country 
finished third out of 13 at the KCAC Championships. In his first year as head coach, Ryland Hinscher rebuilt the Tabor College men's cross country team by leading it to its highest KCAC finish ever in almost, in almost a decade. Uh, the team also sent its first individual national qualifier in six years in, in freshman Alan Katana. Alan, can you stand? The team, the team will retain the entire team for the 2020 season while bringing more talented runners for the 2021 season. Great job, Ryland and cross country team. Women's cross country. For the fourth straight year, the Tabor College women's cross country team finished in the top five of the KCAC championships. It, it finished fourth this overall past season. The performance of NEI national qualifiers Conangela Sr. and Abigail Seacrest played a large part in the women's success. Conangela garnered KCAC All-Conference first team honors for the second year in a row. Abigail earned KCAC All-Conference honorable mention honors for her first season with the team. Will you both stand for me? We'll go with men's soccer next. Whoops, we'll get it worked. It was a long season for the for 14th year head coach Grant Brubaker's Tabor campaign, having to do seasons in both fall and the spring. Um, it divided seasons with many interruptions in training and match play made for a challenging campaign. Tabor, Tabor finished 2-8 and won the fall, and from a side, a few big losses played in a lot of close games. A significant highlight of the first half of the year our first half of the season came on November 7th as Coach Brubaker earned his 100th win as Tamer men's coach with a 2-0 victory over Avila. Let's congratulate Coach Brubaker, 200th win. <laughs> Tabor had one all-conference uh, uh, honoree in Jesus Rondon. Rondon, can you stand up to Jesus, please? Jesus is not here. All right. So. Women's soccer, under coach uh, Ian Thompson, they finished uh, KCAC in five and six, an overall record in seven and nine, and participated in the postseason another year. Um, as with men's soccer, two different seasons, fall and spring. Um, they played for the first time in, in two seasons. The Blue Jays were six and four in the fall half of the campaign, and unbeaten month of October saw wins over Southwestern and Sterling on the road, and York at home. It pushed the Blue Jays' record to seven and four. With a very young team and several key returners, the future looks bright for the Tabor women. Can I have these all-conference winners stand? Natalie Ford, second team. Rachel Bennett, second team. Kayla Joseph, honorable mention. Dakota Spencer, honorable mention. And Sydney Takash, honorable mention. Can you all stand, please? Now we go to football. In a season where nothing was guaranteed due to uh, uh, games being postponed or changed, uh, the team played a 10-game schedule, which I think we're very proud that that happened. Uh, it was an up and down year for Tabor, uh, spanning both semesters. Tabor played four games in the spring. The Blue Jays started by holding nationally in Bethel to its lowest point total at that point in the season. The Blue Jays picked up a big win over on the road at Ottawa. Uh, the Blue Jays registered 12 players on the various all-conference teams. Can I have the following people please stand? Brooks Gardner, second team linebacker. Tyson Nanette, honorable mention wide receiver. Jerron Usher, honorable mention tight end. Lucas Santana, honorable mention offensive line. Parker Folks, honorable mention defensive line. Riggs Robin, honorable mention linebacker. Wyatt Lepke, honorable mention defensive back. Gunnar Reese, honorable mention defensive back. Jordan Suckow, honorable mention defensive back. James Lang, honorable mention defensive back. Joe Cannon, honorable mention kicker, and Joe Chiavetta, honorable mention punter. Let's, well, let's thank them and applaud them. <laughs> we'll turn to volleyball now. It was a year of transition for the volleyball team. With first year coach Mike McNeil at the helm, the Blue Jays posted the highest winning percentage since 2013 and the second highest in program history. They finished third in the KCAC regular season after finishing eighth a year ago. Tabor qualified for the KCAC tournament and uh, uh, 
Four, four, five Blue Jays received all conference awards. Can I have the following people stand? Melody Valencia, first team. Yeah. Taylor Quaring, second team. Yeah. Haley Barta, third team. Yeah. Olivia Dirks, second team. And Taylor Burns, third team. Congratulations. Now we're going to honor the cheer team. The Tabor, Tabor cheer team underwent several changes during the 2020-2021 campaign. With the new coaching staff in place, the Blue Jays are ready to take off and be a part of the football games, basketball games, and other opportunities with a new mascot even. Coaches Krista Matlock and Riley Yoder have big plans for the future of this program, including returning it to a competitive squad next year. Thank you, cheer team. Earlier this evening, we inducted four individuals into the Tabor College Athletic Hall of Fame. Each of our inductees are going to have an opportunity to speak to you this evening about what being a part of Tabor has meant to them. Our first inductee is Tina Frick Clark. Please welcome Tina to the stage. <laughs> Tina transferred to Tabor College as a volleyball unanimous KCAC first team all conference selection each of the three years she played. Her senior year, she was named the KCAC Player of the Year and named an NAI Third Team All-American. Tina was the Tabor College Female Athlete of the Year in 2011 and 2012. Two little mice fell into a bucket of cream. The first mouse quickly gave up and drowned. The second mouse didn't quit. He struggled so hard that he eventually churned that cream into butter and crawled out. This is the motivational speech from the movie Catch Me If You Can my twin brother gave before we headed to the KCAC tournament championship match. But the end of the quote he added in, be that second mouse. Endurance, that was what the little mouse had. He didn't give up. Just hearing the word endurance makes me queasy. I never was a distance runner. So it's a good thing I chose volleyball because two miles was always my maximum. Until Coach Ratzliff decided CrossFit would be fun and we ran what felt like marathons. But when I think about life as a distance race, I'm glad I don't have to do, rely on my own endurance because that would not get me very far. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31 says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will re renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The same person who endured the cross and died for you and me is with us every step of the way, through all of life's phases and changes. My race looks a lot different now than it did when I was sitting in those chairs. But God has been with me every step of the way. From volleyball seasons and training off seasons to now chasing around three little ones, I know that each phase of life, my running partner is always with me. And most of the time, my feet won't even touch the ground because he's carrying me. What an amazing thing to know that God is with me every step of the way and to know that at the end of my race, I won't be getting a trophy or a medal, but a crown and an eternity in heaven with the creator of the universe. That, my friends, is worth running a distance race for. Thank you, Tina. We will move on to uh, winter sports at this time. First team we start out with is men's basketball. Under coach Michael Ratzlaff, the team finished uh, sixth in conference this year um, after finishing 13th a year ago. With several new faces on the court this season, the Tabor College basketball team made great strides over the course of the year. The Blue Jays season came to an end in the KCAC quarterfinal tournament after a great year. We have four all-conference winners. Uh, can these people please stand up? Bobby Shanks, third-team all-conference. <laughs> Nashawn Carter, honorable mention. Andre Nelson, honorable mention. And Leon Marsikic, honorable mention. Let's thank them. Next team is women's basketball. 
The Tabor College basketball started with an impressive win, a road win when it defeated receiving votes Bellevue University, and then COVID struck, and they had a 21-day layoff between their season opener and the next games. They ended up finishing second in the conference, uh, went all the way to the conference championship game, and uh, just had a great year under Coach Sean Reed. Can I have the following um, individuals please stand? Zoe Shield Knight, first team all-conference, and honorable mention all-American. Ashton Wiebe, honorable mention all-conference. Casey Rice, honorable mention all-conference. And Olivia Owens, all-KCAC freshman team and KCAC freshman of the year. <laughs> Next we'll go to men's swimming. Women's, women's swimming, seventh year coach Nate Duell, um, coaches team for the seventh year. The loss of several athletes during the course of the season derailed some of, those, some of his expectations. The first half of the season saw several highlights as junior uh, Jonathan Austin established a new school record in the 200 yard butterfly and the men defeated Sterling in the final meet of the semester. Austin also shattered his previous record in the 200 butterfly as well as setting a new school record in the 100 uh, yard butterfly, narrow missing a national qualifying time. Unfortunately, the uh, national meet got canceled, so we weren't able to qualify uh, athletes to that. Freshman Blake Wiebe destroyed his personal best swims at a conference routinely, dropping multiple seconds every second. So can Blake Wiebe and, uh, John, and, and Austin please stand up? Down here. Okay. Well, it takes care of that. <laughs> Women swimming. Coach Jewell in his seventh year saw his team take on the challenge through COVID and prove throughout the season. The culminating meet of the first half of the season, a double duel against St. Mary and Sterling, marked the beginning of the story of the season. The women bonded together, swam well as a team, and saw the work of the first half of the season come together. They, they finished eighth in the conference meet. They recorded 100% of their PRs in the meet. That's a rare feat in the championship meet. Good job, women swimming. We'll now go to indoor track and field. The Tabor College indoor track and field team finished fourth out of 12 teams in the KCAC with points coming in a majority of the team's events. Toby Pinner qualified for the NEI national meet in the 800 meter run, along with teammate Tyke Owens in the high jump. This, will these uh, all conference uh, uh, honorees please stand? Toby Pinner, Riley Blue Linkstead, Jacob Skinner, Allie Cannon, Deshaun Sanford, Traylon Coleman, Garrett Kinsey, Alex Wilson, Pierce Clausen, Tyke Owens, Dakota Whiteley, Chris Rufino, and Dylan Watkins. All of these posted uh, times to qualify for all conference. The women's indoor track and field team finished fourth this year in the KCAC Indoor Championships. While the team featured many new athletes in their first year of collegiate track, the team still continued their success over the past seasons. The women's team scored a total of 65 points. Kaylee Deal qualified at the NEI National Meet in the weight throw and was essential to the team's success. The following athletes received all conference award based on their events. Destiny Cooper, Soledad Borgstad, Dekayla Gaines, Sarah Bird, Danielle Allison, Grace Davis, Abigail Bergeron, Ariana Granderson, Kaylee Deal, and Madison Johnson. If you can all stand. This concludes our winter sports. Our second Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame inductee this evening is Chrissy Pervetera Glanzer. Please welcome Chrissy as she comes to the stage. <laughs> Chrissy was a four-year letter winner in soccer and a four-year letter in KCAC first team all-conference selection during her time at Tabor College. She was the KCAC Offensive Player of the Year her freshman and senior years. Chrissy was named an NEI Honorable Mention All-American in 1999, 2000, 2002. Thank you, Tabor. And honestly, I had a super hard time trying to find something to say to you tonight. And uh, then my daughter chimed in, Mom, just tell them what you tell us before games. And I thought, I got one smart kiddo. And I was surprised she was actually really listening to me. My husband, Matt, and myself are extremely blessed to have two amazing kids that just happen to be amazing soccer players. My son, Canyon, who's 10, has the best left-footed shot and can hit a free kick on goal anywhere on the field. He's been mastering curving the ball on corner kicks and has recently made a goal using this newly practiced skill in his last Kansas City tournament. 
My daughter, Olive, is turning 12 soon. She's a beast on the soccer field and not afraid to take people down. Maybe she gets that from me. She's also such a great dribbling and ball skills, puts me to shame. Anyways, my word of advice to my kids and encouragement for them before games has always been to keep shooting, keep moving, and keep taking chances. First, to keep shooting. I'm not sure there was ever stats taken back in the day when I was playing, but I'm almost positive I missed more shots than I ever made. All those, it's all about perseverance. If you want to find success, just double your failure rate. All those missed shots, missed opportunities, help prepare you for the big shots you do make. So don't give up on the first sign of failure. Be persistent and you will find success. The second thing I tell them is to keep moving. This is a slow, steady movement. Count your growth 1% at a time. These percentages add up fast, and before you know it, you're finding success. An example of this is if you start out with $100 at the beginning of the year, and you increase that by 1% every single day, at the end of the year, you will have $3,778.34. That is about a 38 times what you had at the beginning of the year. The idea is, instead of trying to make radical changes in a short amount of time, make small improvements every day that will gradually lead lead you to the change that you want. So get your 1% every day. Lastly, I tell my kids to take a chance. We were up in Kansas City a few weekends ago for all of soccer tournament. Her team had been playing hard all weekend against some really tough competition. They made it to the finals and it was tied 0-0 at half. I'm pretty sure her coach gave her a pep talk before the second half. Within the first few minutes, my daughter received the ball in the air from the keeper she did a nice give and go up the sideline. She paused and I can see the wheels in her head turning. Pass or take a chance. She continued to the goal, beating one player with a smooth move and then another, when she was facing off against the keeper. She hit a great shot far post and ended up winning the tournament goal for her team. She struggled all year getting shots off, so I was proud of her that she decided to take that chance. So choose to believe in yourself, defy expectations, and take a chance. You never want to be left wondering what if. Best of luck to all the continuing athletes and congratulations to all the team and individual awards given tonight. The ability to continue your education while playing the sport you love is an amazing opportunity. So make lots of memories and keep moving, keep shooting, and keep taking chances. Thanks, Chrissy. Our first team for the spring sports is men's baseball. As you know, the baseball season's not yet concluded and the team will play this weekend or this week in the conference tournament. Currently, the record for the baseball team is 25 and three and the KCAC an overall record of 34 and 15 under, under Mark Staniford. They're second right now on the team. Tabor also ranks highly in many areas. Stolen bases, runs scored per game, 18 in total runs scored. Leadoff man and center fielder Robert Eisenhower has led the nation in total steal attempts and total stolen bases. I think he had a few more this last weekend. Um, catcher Leo Aguilar ranks sixth in total putouts, seventh in total chances, and eighth in putouts. The, the team plays this weekend. Uh, like I said, they, they start Wednesday in the first round of the conference tournament in Great Bend. We hope to have more uh, honors for them here soon. So, the next team is uh, women's softball. They will also play in the conference tournament on Wednesday at one o'clock in Great Bend against Bethany College. They finished the season at fourteen and thirty and seventh in the in the regular season. After nearly a year without competition, second-year coach Jeff Brewer and the Tabor women's softball team were anxious to get back in the field. Once April appeared on the calendar, uh, the Blue Jay Bass began to heat up and they scored runs, 61 runs, the first 10 games of the month. On the mound, the 38 games, Marley Baxter and Zoe Brewer lead with four wins each. Hannah Jones leads with a 4.77 ERA. Good job, women's softball. Our next group is, um, is men's track and field. They also are having their conference meet this next weekend in Ottawa. 
The Blue Jays had a big uh, event or back a big track meet. We hosted last week about a thousand thousand team or runners and and field events, as well as about 30 teams. Uh, the men's indoor team so far has got two national qualifying performance. They're sending uh, Toby Penner and Jacob Skinner to the national uh, track meet. Can you two stand and be congratulated? <laughs> women's track and field. The women's track and field is also uh, competing in the conference track meet this next weekend. The they also have sent two of their athletes in a national meet. Kaylee Dill will make a return trip to the national meet, and Ariana Granderson will join Dill for the meet in Alabama in the long jump. Can you please stand? <laughs> men's golf. The men's golf uh, team had a full season this year, which was great. The Blue Jays finished the year seventh out of nine at KCAC championships. Leading the way for the Blue Jays were senior transfers Zach Gibson and Logan Matthews. Logan had Tabor's best finish this fall with a second place finish of 71-75 at Sack Creek Station. Zach Gibson and freshman Marco Espinal also had top five finishes for the Blue Jays during the season. Can you stand and be honored if you're here? <laughs> Women's golf. The women's golf team finished their first full season since they restarted the program. Sophomore Valdisa Andoff led the Blue Jays, finishing in top 10 of all tournaments placed in the season. She's currently in range to capture the conference championship. She was named first team all conference um, and was in top five most of her meets. Unfortunately, I think she went home already, so she's not here. So we can clap for Valdisa from a distance. <laughs> Let's go to men's tennis. There we go. On her, first, on her second year coach, uh, Luke Rencher, uh, faced a variety of opponents this season, including a lot of D2 programs. The Blue Jays, uh, for the first time, qualified since 2000, or the last eight years, qualified for the first time in postseason in the last eight years. Mikkel Alexander was taped all conference. Mikkel Alexander, can you stand? Women's tennis narrowly finished or narrowly missed the playoffs. Uh, they had played a lot of good opponents. The Blue Jays started KCAC with a strong performance, defeating Bethany College. Uh, de recorded a second straight conference win with a 5 2 decision over Bethel. Olivia uh, Brubaker finished first team all conference and I believe was undefeated in conference play. Can Olivia stand? Our third Hall of Fame honoree is Chad Dirksen in the sport of football. Please welcome Chad. Chad was a four-year letter winner and four-year all-KCAC performer in football at Tabor College. His junior year, he was named KCAC First Team All-Conference and was an NEI Honorable Mention All-American. Chad's senior year, he was named KCAC First Team All-Conference and an NEI Second Team All-American. All right. Thank you. Um, so I know when I was here and I sat in things like this, I have no idea what anybody talked about, so I'm not going to think that you will either. Um, I remember sitting out there one year, and I'm pretty sure Coach G and everyone else, it was they planned it on the night of the Big 12 football championship, and it was Oklahoma and Kansas State. And everybody, we didn't have cell phones, most of us back then, so we had to listen to it on little Walkman radios in the back. So, <laughs> coach, no. So, I know probably, how many of you have cell phones now? Does everybody have a cell phone? Everybody? Okay. So, I'm a fireman now, and one of the things I notice all the time is you'll be having like this, this conversation, you'll be talking with, with the guys, and, and all of a sudden, from somewhere in the back, someone will be on their cell phone, you hear that, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> TikTok, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> So I was sitting at a family function one time with uh, my wife's grandpa, 
and he was a super social guy named Hoyt. And he was a great guy. And he was sitting there, and it was all, there was probably like 15 of us there. And he said, uh, he said, he started to get a phone call. And he always answered his phone, and he'd be like, you know, and he'd just visit and everything else. And that one time, I still remember, he picked up his cell phone and then set it down because he was like, why would I answer my cell phone? I've got everybody that matters to me sitting right here. And I just want you guys to remember, if nothing else, Tabor's a short time. You're not going to, it feels like it's going to be a long time right now, but it's short. And a coach told me one time here uh, to make sure you take a mental picture in your mind when something's going on. And uh, it might have been Coach Gardner. I don't really remember if it was you or not, though. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I got hit in the head like a thousand times. <laughs> it, is, it is rough. <laughs> it's a rough life after football. <laughs> but if you can take anything away, it's, you only, you're only going to strap on those pads for a short time in your life. It's not like on Tuesday night, I'm going to go strap on some pads, throw on a helmet, and go play football with the boys. It ends. And so I would encourage you guys, while you're here, to take advantage of these experiences, remember them, enjoy the gifts that God's given you, and, uh, you know, just have a great time. Don't spend it on TikTok. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. At this time, I would ask the following athletes to come to the stage to be honored for the KCAC Player of the Week. I will read these names. Jesus Rondon, Tiffany Wainscott, Parker Folks, Joe Cannon, Canangela Sr., Andre Nelson, Bobby Shanks, Nashawn Carter, Jalissa Garcia, Zoe Shield Knight, Kaylee Dill, Ashton Wiebe, Mike Selleck, Taylor Query, Kaylee Dill, Austin Seidel, Olivia Brubaker, Ariana Granderson, and Toby Penner. Each of these athletes at one point were named a KCAC Player of the Week for their, for their uh, abilities during the week. Thank you. Our fourth Hall of Fame inductee is Hiram Finney in the sport of basketball. Please welcome Hiram to the stage. <laughs> Hiram transferred to Tabor College and was a basketball unanimous KCAC first team all-conference selection his junior and senior years. As a senior, Hiram was named KCAC Player of the Year, a member of the NAI Division II uh, All-Tournament Team, and an NAI Second Team All-American. Hiram was the Tabor College Male Athlete of the Year in 96 and 97. You can adjust it. <laughs> Hi, I'm told to keep it short again repeatedly. People have heard me talk, so keep it short. So no stories of the puppy lost his way or the Industrial Revolution or whatever. Some of you are. Oh, okay. I thought you were all be too young for that. Sorry, Billy Madison pirated that. Okay. So, uh, my story with Tabor College is pretty simple. It's one of appreciation, one of grace. I uh, transferred to Tabor College halfway through my sophomore year uh, after uh, being asked to leave another college, is a nice way of putting it. So, uh, Tabor College. Uh, my junior year of high school uh, came recruited two friends of mine to play here, Chris Strathman and Jesse Herman. Rusty Allen was my coach then. Uh, they asked about me then because of arrogance at that time. Uh, I was going to go play mid-major D1 school somewhere, and Tabor was beneath me. 
after going and playing mid-major uh, for a year and a half, getting in some trouble, I came back home to Kansas with my tail between my legs and needed a home. Uh, called all the people that recruited me when I was in high school, and it's amazing after you smoke your red shirt year, there's not a whole lot of places that want you, especially so you have to sit out a year at that time, transfer into another D1 school. Uh, Don Brubaker was the coach at that time, and he was gracious enough after me passing on Tabor to offer me another shot. So that's where the grace in my story comes from, is the grace of Tabor through his Christianity. He offered me the chance to come to Tabor. The appreciation is what I learned here at Tabor. I learned here at Tabor about the fellowship of Christ, the fellowship of your friends, the respect of your coaches, and the respect of your teachers. These aren't going to be the best days of your life. I'm not going to lie to you. These are going to be great days of your life, but there's going to be so much more in front of you. But what these days are is they are a clear foundation for you to build off of. You can build off of the foundation of respect. You can build off the foundation of grace. All these things that you will learn here, and you'll be able to have a great future in front of you because of what you learn here. So good luck to you, and enjoy. Congratulations for great seasons. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, At this time, I would like to bring Dr. Carol Hunt, Associate Athletic Director at Tabor. Carol organizes and leads our Champions of Character program and at Tabor, and she has student athletes, teams, and coaches she would like to recognize. The KCAC recognizes a, a person from each team to receive a medallion of, of Champion of Character. So these names have been uh, chosen already. Uh, I'd like to have you come up as I read your name. You're, they've all, most of them have already received their medallion. Others will at their championships. Men's cross country, Pierce Clausen. <laughs> Women's cross country, Abby Sechrist. <laughs> Women's soccer, Natalie Ford. <laughs> Men's soccer, Will Boney. <laughs> Football, Parker, Parker Fultz. Volleyball, Caitlin Crisp. Yay! Women's track and field, Abby Bergren. Men's indoor track and field, Toby Penner. Women's basketball, Hannah Gilmore. Men's basketball, Noah Brown. Yay! Women's swimming, Madison Shepard. Softball, Chelsea Knight. Baseball, Robert Eisenhower. <laughs> Women's outdoor track and field, Kate Reimer. Men's outdoor track and field, Trajan Smith. Women's tennis, Olivia Brubaker. Men's tennis, Justin Schrader. Women's golf, Valdista Andoff. And men's golf, Zach Gibson. In addition to these individuals, the KCAC honors a team of character for each uh, sport, and our women's cross country team and our women's track and field team also won these awards. So let's congratulate our champions of character. Okay. And each year, the KCAC recognizes champions of character individuals, male and female, a coach of character, and team character uh, awards. And th the nominations are being collected, and uh, the voting go happens during the summer to, for these award winners, and they are recognized in August, but we, we often don't get the winners, I always get depressed because I think everybody I nominate needs to win, but I can't vote for our own, and other liaisons on their campuses have other ideas. But I would like to give a certificate to recognize 
the people that we are nominating for these KCAC awards. So if you would come up, uh, women's champion of character, Abigail Seacrest. <laughs> Male champion of character, Toby Penner. <laughs> Coach of character, Mark Staniford. <laughs> and team of character, women's cross country. So Coach Hinscher, would you come and represent? your team. So before Coach Staniford leaves, stay here, Coach Staniford, please. <laughs> so on Saturday afternoon, Coach Staniford had a pretty big milestone. His team won the game against Sterling, and that was Coach Staniford's 500th victory all at Tabor. That's pretty slim. The next group that we would like to come up is the four-year letter winners. These student athletes will be receiving a watch in the near future, but for now I'm gonna ask they come up to the stage to be recognized. Derek Harper, football. Wyatt, Wyatt Bell, football. Federico Bove, Bove, men's soccer. Dakota Spencer, women's soccer. Tiffany Wainscott, women's soccer. Olivia Dirksen, volleyball. Sammy Joe Peterson, ball, or, ba, women's basketball, sorry. Muriel Gibson, women's swimming. Derek Watts, baseball. Sh Shannon Johnson, baseball. Madison Primrose, softball. Hannah Jones, softball. Chelsea Knight, softball. Marley Baxter, softball. Olivia Brubrecker, women's tennis. Nathan Ahrens, men's track and field. Garen Kinsey, men's track and field. Riley Blue Linkstad, men's track and field. Trajan Smith, men's track and field. Jacob Skinner, men's track and field. Madison Johnson, women's track and field. And Sarah Bird, women's track and field. As I said, each of you will be receiving watches for, to commemorate your four years of playing here. Got it. Thank you. At this time, I'll bring back Dr. Carol Hunt for the next presentations. We have a couple scholarships that we would like to name the recipients tonight. The first one is the Janessa Ladd Memorial Scholarship for Exercise Science. Uh, Janessa was a junior, a, a, a sophomore, finished her sophomore year ready to be a junior. She died unexpectedly in July 2015. She was an athletic training major who had an unmatched passion and work ethic for learning and providing services for athletes. And out of heartbreak came a living legacy to remember her. Janessa's uh, mother could, was gonna come tonight. She was not able to because of their uh, illness in the family. And Janessa Ladd Memorial Scholarship is awarded this year to Kaylee Harrington.
This next scholarship is in memory of my mother, my father, and my stepmother. My mother passed away in 1986, and please forgive that uh, fashion statement. You know, no matter how old you get, your, your parents still embarrass you. <laughs> and then my, my father and stepmother both passed away during the 2012-13 academic year. And to remember their lives, who they devoted to service, mostly in the church, and to honor their legacy, our family has established an endowed scholarship awarded annually to a sport management major who's posted on academics and in preparing for his or her profession. And this year's recipient is Jim Gassman. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. At this time, I would like to welcome Dr. Glanzer and his wife, Peg, to the stage. As you know, Dr. Glanzer is retiring after serving as president of Tabor College in 2008. He and Peg have been faithful and avid supporters of Tabor Athletics in many ways. On behalf of the athletic department, I want to thank both of you for your support of Tabor. We look forward to seeing you at our athletic contest in the future. Wow. You have something to say? <laughs> Thank you. You have no idea of all the memories you've given us, and we'll go from here always thinking about the big plays and how you have made Tabor such a wonderful place. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for playing the game. Thank you for honoring us. When we weren't there, you need to know we were watching you at home <laughs> or on the road on my, on my screen. And there were many conferences I was at where I was watching you play on my, my phone instead of listening to the speaker. Maybe you shouldn't have been doing it, but you've been at our heart. Thank you so much for all you've done for us. We now have a number of awards to present to student athletes. Coaches nominated individuals from their teams or other teams for these awards, and then these awards are voted on by coaches and athletic administrators. Uh, many of these awards had four or five nominees, so coaches had to make choices between several many good athletes. So this year we have the Newcomer of the Year Award in both female and male. This award is for a new freshman or transfer who has made an immediate impact on the team or and in the conference. Our female newcomer of the year, Olivia Owens basketball. Come on up. <laughs> Olivia was named to the KCAC freshman of the year and KCAC all freshman team. Owens averaged 6.3 points per game, 4.3 rebounds, and shot 49% from the field, 33% from the behind three point line, and 80% from the free throw. Our male newcomer of the year is Austin Seidel Baseball. Austin has an ERA of 2.72. He is among the current leader in strikeout, wins, and saves. 
Currently, he has six and one, five saves as of this writing. He's one of the best pitchers in, our, in the conference. He has a chance to be drafted either this year or next year. He will be a first team all conference player. This next award is what we're calling the Unsung Hero of the Year Award. This award is given to someone who is not always in the headlines or receiving awards on a weekly basis, but is someone who's a key part of the team, both on and off the field of play, putting in work that many of us don't always see. We had many nominees for this, but the winner is Kate Reimer of Cross Country Track and Field. Her coaches have said this. Kate is one who consistently shows up, does the work, and does not complain. She has been a student teaching, she has been student teaching this semester, and does most of her workouts on her own due to scheduling. She has also been a great encourager to all teammates, along with being a great leader for the women's team. She was also our champion of character for women's track. While Kate is not always one of the top runners in the conference, she is someone who is always encouraging of her teammates, who shows up to practice every day with a positive attitude and one of the hardest workers on the team. She has been a four-year positive performance in the team. We had an un another unsung hero that uh, was nominated, and we decided to put in another category. Um, this is a special athletic staff award, and that is to Troy Quinzer of the athletic training department. Please come up, Troy. Troy was nominated for the Unsung Hero Award by several coaches. We decided to honor him with a special award for his tireless work this year. He went above and beyond in many ways taking care of our student athletes, testing our student athletes, and at times our employees community members. We do thank him and his staff, Jim Moore, Caitlin Ellis, and Kate Raquel for being amazing team members of this, in this year of flexibility. Please join me in thanking Troy and his athletic training team. We have a new, the, new award this year, the Fan of the Year Award, and we had several people that were nominated. But this year, the Fan of the Year Award goes to Kenny Johnson. No one loves Tabor Athletics more than Kenny. He is a fixture at our many of our athletic events and he loves the Blue Jays. Our student athletes know Kenny and they love to and they love him too, which I think is super cool according to his co or according to one coach. Kenny loves Tabor Athletics and gives men's basketball a motivational speech before every game. Thank you, Kenny. Our next award is the Breakthrough Athlete of the Year. This award goes to someone who showed drastic improvement from last year to this year. This individual, these individual athletes stepped up their game and broke onto the scene with incredible seasons. We had many, uh, many award or nominees for this, but the winner is Robert Eisenhower Baseball. Last year, Robert hit 235 with one home run, three RBIs, and five stolen bases. This year, he had, he's hitting 432, five home runs, 30 RBIs, 32 stolen bases, and I think there's more now, and 54 runs scored. He leads the country in stolen bases, 11th at hits, 16 runs scored, and 20th in triples.
we now have the Mighty Blue Jay Award. This award is given to a student athlete who embodies everything that it means to be a Blue Jay. Hardworking, honest, loyal, will never get up. A leader, strong in their faith, and always willing to go the extra mile in order to go and help the team succeed. As I said, we've had several nominees in this, but our winner is Parker Folks Football. Parker's commitment to the team is something very special that he possesses. He's involved in various clubs and organizations on campus. One moment he can be seen, seen, can be seen sacking the quarterback, and next day he's leading the charge for an organization on campus. This next award is for Coach of the Year. We had four coaches nominated. All four were very uh, deserving of this, and it was very close in voting. The four that were nominated, Sean Reed for basketball, Mike McNeil volleyball, Ryland Hitcher cross country, and Luke Wrencher tennis. The winner was Luke Wrencher tennis. Luke was voted as coach of the year by his peers. He's done an amazing job recruiting his teams, and this year he's led his men's team to the conference tournament for the first time in eight years. At this time, I would like to honor our NAI All-Americans, and that would be Zoe Shield Knight. Please come on up. Zoe was a named honorable mention All-American in women's basketball. She was a first team All-KCAC pick and led her team in scoring and was also the team leader in rebounding. <laughs> Gotta wait for the thumbs up. Now we go to the Female Scholar Athlete of the Year. Many, many nominees were in this, this uh, bracket, but the winner is Olivia Brubaker with tennis and soccer. She played both tennis and soccer as a 3.9 GPA. <laughs> All may, our, our male scholar athlete of the year, Wyatt Bell football. Wyatt has a 4.0 GPA and will be starting med school at the University of Kansas in the fall. Our last two awards are the Female and Male Athletes of the Year. Once again, there was many nominees for each of these. But our Female Athlete of the Year, Zoe Shield Knight, Women's Basketball. Once again, she was an NAI Autumn Rich and All-American selection, KCAC first team, all KCAC, two-time player of the week. She had an outstanding season, led her team in both scoring and rebounding. Her efforts not only earned her individual honors, but helped our team to a 1988 overall record and second place finish in the KCAC. <laughs> our male athlete of the year, Toby Penner, track and field. He's a national qualifier in the 400 meter hurdles for the spring and qualified for the NEI Indoor National Championships and the 800 meters this winter. 
He currently leads the KCAC performance list in the 400 meter hurdles and is third in the 110 meter hurdles while running on both the 4x4 and 4x8 relays. Toby also represents Tabor College both as an athlete and as a community member in the best way possible. He serves at Parkview MB Church on the missions committee, works every Wednesday night with Team Kid at Parkview, is heavily involved in SPD at Tabor. He is the president of SALT at T Tabor College, and he represents Tabor on the KCAC SALT group. Congratulations. Please join me once again in congratulating all tonight's award winners and amazing student athletes that we have at Tabor. I would like to thank the following people who helped make tonight's events possible. The cake that you had punch you had outside was uh, from Pioneer Caters. I know they're probably not in here, but uh, see if you can give them a round of applause they hear out there. Mike Lawson is responsible for the slides and programs you see. He's done a great job with that. Please give him a round of applause. I don't, Mike Jamison is the one who did the video for us. David Edgar right now is back in the studio helping stream this. He's the one who put all the information together to get it ready. Dr. Carol Hunt has been helping editing documents and doing many things behind the scenes, including champions of character. Claire Frick also did many things behind the scenes. She was very busy getting this together for the last three or four months. She's up there. You can please give her a hand. And I don't believe they're in here, but Jason Schroeder and his team for setting up, they've just been busy this weekend. So if you see them, give them a, a thank you for that. So. I would like to have uh, Rusty Allen come up. Our Vice President of Operations is going to include us in prayer before he, does, before he prays. Um, we would like the award winners with your plaques to meet at the backdrop so we can do some individual pictures with the backdrops. And a secondly, reminder for returning athletes, we're going to be right back here at 8 o'clock tomorrow night to talk about fall, what we need to do. You don't have to dress up for that. So thank you once again. If everybody could stand, that'd be great. <clears throat> it's been a great evening, so uh, let's bow together in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just want to pause this evening and thank you for the goodness that you've uh, poured out over Tabor Athletics this past year. God, you know that for a long time I've held close to my heart that excellence enhances ministry, that when people do, God, what they do really well, there's an opportunity to reflect your glory and give witness to your son, Jesus Christ. And it's been a year of excellence, and we've been able to witness that this evening, and we're thankful. I'm personally, God, thankful for all the athletes and the coaches and the trainers and the administrators and the various other people that are so intimately involved in what we do in our athletic department. I pray your blessing, your favor over each of them this evening, God. I pray that you'd help us as we reflect on this past year and all the opportunities that we've had to compete, help us to honor you as we move forward. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to just have fun together and recognize all these accomplishments. We give the remainder of this year to you, and we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You all are dismissed. Have a great evening. estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings